May Allah heal you from whatever pain you are suffering from. May Allah heal you from whatever pain you are suffering from. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله well, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, welcome back to another episode on the Silsila Spiritual Cures, where we try to compile some of the researches of His Eminence, Amir Ahl Sunnah Dawud Barakatuhumul Aliyah, the founder of Dawud Islami, and present it to you, the dear viewers and listeners out there. Uh, today, as well, we have some very important points, Madani pearls of advices, uh, some invocations for different types of issues and problems that real problems that people are facing around the globe and perhaps you may be afflicted by one or many of these issues or you, you may know somebody so stay tuned right to the end and as per our routine let's remember the beautiful hadith niyatul mu'mini khayrum min amalihi the intention of a believer is better than his action so don't delay make those good intentions today make them right now ya allah azza wa jal I am watching, I am listening to this silsila of Madani channel for your ridha, for your pleasure and happiness, for the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That what I learn, I will try to practice, I will try to share with others as well. Grab your notebooks, your diaries, so that you can jot down the important Madani pearls of advices and always refer to them at a later stage. Whenever you're watching Madani channel, especially Madani Mudakara, have a, a, a specific diary where you know, okay, Madani, Madani Mudakura episode, this Amir Ahl Sunnah Dham Burkatum Aliyah mentioned these beautiful points or any other silsilas of Madani channel as well because ink is the best memory. And as Sayyiduna Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says, capture knowledge by writing it down. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. There are so many beautiful bounties for the fortunate Muslims who recite abundant amounts of durood e pak salawat or salutations upon the cream of creation, the cause of creation, the crown of creation, the owner of Jannah, the intercessor of the Ummah, our most merciful master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That person who recites durood e pak just one time, Allah Azza wa Jal grants 10 thawab, 10 rewards for that person. Allah Azza wa Jal removes 10 sins and raises that person's status in his court by 10 times. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. How beautiful is that? Just by the recitation of one durood e pak. If I say Sallallahu Ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's two duruds. Those, those are the shortest duruds. And every day I must make it my mission, part of my routine, part of my habit to try and recite 313 times to do the park. I can do this. It's not a big number. Because we waste so much of our valuable time in this short life in unnecessary conversations, useless activities that have no real benefit for us in this world, the grave or the hereafter. Why don't we be wise investors and invest in this world for the hereafter by keeping our tongues moist with the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, with the recitation of quran e paak durood e paak istighfar and seeking knowledge of deen, learning knowledge of deen, practicing it with, for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the things that will benefit us, inshallah, in this world, of course, and more so in the grave and the hereafter as well. Let's recite together. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatan wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a fact that each one of us is going to leave this world because we are like travelers. 
we actually, our reality starts off in Alam Arwah, the world of the souls. We are transferred into Darul Asbab, into this dunya, this earthly life, this world. From here, we will be transferred into another realm, Alam Barzakh, the barrier, the world or the realm and universe of the barrier, which is the barrier between this world and the hereafter. And from there, everything is going to be destroyed and only Allah Azza wa Jal he will be there. We will all then be resurrected, brought to life again. Everything I say, everything I do, every letter that comes out of this mouth, every action, no matter how insignificant it is, is recorded by the angels. Kiram and Katibin. These are the scribes. They are there. We can't see them. We can't hear them. But they're writing. They're busy recording every detail of what we say, what we do. Subhanallah. And if I do good, if I say good, if I do bad or say bad, I'm going to see that in my nama e amal my book of deeds on the Day of Judgment. This is, like, this is like a book of life, the book of your entire life written down. It's like our biography written down, but to the detail, the minute details are included therein. So I need to, I need to think about this seriously. What am I getting written in my book of deeds, my book of life. Is it good things or is it bad things? Is it hurtful things? Is it positive things or negative things? Am I violating people's rights? Because once Malik al-Mud comes, once an angel of death appears, then it's over. I, I can't do nothing, I can't say nothing, but if I invested my time, my wealth, my expertise in the deen by building a masjid or an ulum or helping the poor and needy, building a hospital, a library, something where people are benefiting from. And if I did it with the correct intentions to please my Allah Azza wa Jal, to please my beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to earn some thawab for the hereafter, then inshallah ta'ala we will see the benefits of all of that. <laughs> So before we get that visit, that first and last visit of the angel of death, let's prepare. And this is part and parcel of the teachings that you will hear, that you will see, that you will experience in this environment of Dawati Islam. Everything is aimed towards that. Prepare for your hereafter. Do for the pleasure of Allah. Don't do for the pleasure of the people. The people will abandon you. They will let you down one day. But if you remember, if you're loyal to Allah Azza wa and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will see the benefit of that. Especially when you, when you need it the most on the Day of Judgment. So let's make up our minds because that's where everything starts. You change your mindset and you change everything. That's where it starts. I need to decide. People have this idea that it's my choice, it's my life, I do, can do as I please. Well, as a believer, as a Muslim, uh, this life does not belong to me. It belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has bought, has purchased the lives and the wealth of the believers in exchange for Jannah. Subhanallah. So it doesn't belong to me. I can't just mutilate my body with tattoos and all these body mods that are modifications that are there and um, other any silly things, I'm going to be answerable for, the, for that. Because I belong to Allah. When a person passes away, what do we say? Istirja' inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Do I ponder over the meaning? That indeed I be, we belong to Allah. And indeed to Him is our return. We belong to Him and we are returning to Him. He owns us. He owns everything that we have, that we possess. If imagine you have something, your possession, and somebody else takes it and does as they please with it, they change it, they modify it, would you be happy with that? Of course not. This is how I like it. This belongs to me. Who are you to take it away from me and do as you please and change it? So my body belongs to Allah. My life belongs to Allah. My possessions, my materialistic possessions, my everything 
belongs to the real owner who is Allah Azza wa Jal. These are just trust. It's just a trust. I'm looking after it. Whatever possessions I have, the children that I have, the family that I have, the life that I have, I'm looking, I'm, you know, taking care of it for and supervising it for a short period of time. That's the understanding and mindset I need to have as a Muslim, as a believer, as an Ummati of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And yes, there are people that have these fears. So what's going to happen to me? And we should have this fear. Number one fear of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Because if there's no fear of Allah, a person can do anything. A person can beat up anybody, can murder anybody can disrespect their parents, beat up their parents, can oppress anybody or anything. There's no fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. I need to fear the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those are real. Aidab al qabri haqqun, that the punishment of the grave is a reality, it's going to happen. You and I are going to be there all alone in the darkness of that grave. The little place that's going to be our bed, sand is going to be our pillow. Am I ready for it? Am I preparing for it? And true success, if every other success one side, true success is if I left this dunya with my iman intact, with my belief, with my faith intact. If I, I'm successful then, that person is successful. Allah will grant us a good shaheed mode with iman in beautiful Madinatul Manawwara, buried in Jannatul Baqi. Ameen bijahi khatmin nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to share with you a very simple wadifa to recite that if a person is habitual with this, inshallah azza wa jal, he will leave this world with iman. Our master, the great mujaddid, the great reviver of Islam, al Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan alayhi rahmatul rahman, was asked about protection of iman at the time of death. And he mentioned, when you're going to sleep, after your wadifas, after your duas, after your surahs, the very last thing you recite is Surah Kafirun. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. The whole surah, one time. And you sleep and you don't engage in any conversation thereafter. If you have to, talk to somebody, answer the call, whatever it is, then recite the surah again. That must be your absolute last thing and sleep away. The person who does this and is, is habitual with this, inshallah ta'ala, that person's iman will be protected and will leave this world with iman. And iman is the most valuable asset, the most prized possession of a believer. And the thief of iman is always plotting and planning and trying to corrupt this iman, trying to destroy this iman. You know what I'm talking about. It's real. Iblis, Shaitan, the cursed and humiliated one, is there 24-7. How, how can I, you know, finish this person's iman? Make him say something. Make him do something. Make him question Allah Azza wa Jal. So that without him even realizing it, iman is gone. Destroyed. Allahu Akbar. So be wary of this Aduwum Mubeen, the open enemy. Shaitan, Iblis, he is the real enemy and he puts all these funny, negative, evil, sinister ideas in our minds through his wasawis, his evil whispers. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a question asked in one of the Madani Mudakaras that what should one do for ease in the grave, in the qabr? Subhanallah. For those who are punctually, not just filling out, but practicing upon nek a'mal, then this is an easy answer. And nek a'mal is such a program. You can download the free app from App, from app Store, Play Store, or you can obtain the hard copy from Maktabatul Madina, the Bookshop and Publications Department of Dawati Islami. And this is actually a program where there's a set of daily questions, weekly, monthly, yearly, lifetime questions as well that you are going to ask yourself. 
each person ask themselves, do some introspection. And, this, and the daily questions you, you're going to ask yourself every day. Try to um, fix a time. At this time, okay, it's my nek amal filling time now. And look at your progress. You can monitor your progress. Did I make good intentions today? Did I perform my five times salah today? Did I make salam to Muslims? Did I uh, obey? Did, was I respectful to my parents? Did I obey the traffic rules today? Did I engage in backbiting or lying and malice, hatred? So many beautiful questions, important questions, because this is part and parcel of character refinement. And this is one of the ways that Islam had, had spread and is spreading as well through the, 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 the refined character of Muslims. People look at this, uh, at, at this practice, practicing Muslim that I want to be like this person, positive and clean, hygiene, pleasant, no vulgar, filthy words, ob no obscene jokes, no lying, somebody who's honest, somebody we can trust. All those beautiful qualities as taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as taught to us by Islam. If I study my Islam, and um, how, how do I go about studying it? Dawati Islami. Dawati Islami has, has the facilities, has the platforms on daily, weekly, monthly basis. There's, some, there's always something there to do. Like your nek a'mal is something daily. Your weekly ijtima. You, you, you can attend at your local Madani Markaz Islamic Center of Dawati Islami. For Islamic brothers, they can travel with Madani Qafilas at least once a month. There's special classes designed for grown-ups, Baligha and Baligat, separate classes for men, for women as well. And then there's a weekly booklet that's always sent out. There is specialized courses, online courses as well. If you visit our website, dawatislami.net, and you go, to the, you go to the courses section, you'll find different courses, subhanAllah, beautiful courses. Some are to do with fard ulum, knowledge which is obligatory upon every Muslim male and female. Regarding salah, regarding ghusl, regarding wudu, the basics, regarding aqaid, um, correct Islamic beliefs, regarding fiqh, jurisprudence, so much more as well, subhanAllah. So what should one do? If they want ease in the qabr, in the grave. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, Amir Ahl Sunnah, Dhamul Barakatuh Mul'adiya had mentioned that the individual who recites Surah Mulk every night, that person will be saved from the test of the grave. Subhanallah. Simple, very simple. But I need to make my mind up to practice upon this because this is one of the nek a'mal this is one of the the points in nek a'mal in in good deeds that did you recite surah mulk tonight uh, and at least after maghrib we should recite it and look at the benefit just for that recite it will take you maybe five to seven minutes to recite it but also important that i recite it correctly with the jaweed with the khadij with the rules of the quran and qiraat with the correct pronunciations. So how do I learn that? Dawud Islam is there for you. Madrasatul Madina, Baligan, Baligat. Online Madrasatul Madina is going on and this is one of the very successful departments. Log on to our website via there. You can link to different places, to the book section, to the courses section, online courses section, and so much more as well. SubhanAllah. So try to make the intention now. That I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to recite Surah Mulk every night, inshallah Azza wa Jal. And that person who recites the following, which is in Surah Yasin, verse 25, the one who recites this will face ease with the questions in the grave. Very easy. Surah Yasin, verse 25, every, every day. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'oon Every day, recite this. Surah Yasin, verse 25, that person will face ease with the Christians in the Qabr. MashaAllah, I've been told that uh, we have some questions that are ready. So we will request our director, sir, please go ahead and play the first call. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
وعينكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته How do I increase blessings in my income? I think almost every person, every Muslim has this question. Because nowadays we see, we hear uh, so often, I don't see the barakah, I don't see those blessings in my risk, in my, in my income. I'm, I'm earning so much. I'm earning a lot. I don't see it. Now this topic is, uh, uh, is a vast topic, but in a nutshell, I need to identify first, am I doing certain things or something that is affecting the barakah and the blessings in my income, in my risk? Am I violating anybody's, uh, anybody's uh, rights? Am I oppressing anybody? Am I uh, doing such a job that is not halal, which is not permitted, where in fact it is haram to engage in those activities in that job? Of course, I mean, how, how would I expect barakah and blessings if I'm going to mix halal and haram, so I'm not doing justice to the job or my job description? So uh, that's the first step. Identify, uh, uh, am I possibly doing something wrong? There's a very beautiful book, uh, a little booklet by Amir Ahl Sunnah Damal Barakatul Muladiya, Causes uh, of Deprivation and Its Cures. You can download from the website as well. And it gives you a whole list of things that a person uh, could be doing and therefore leads to deprivation. What we say, be barakati, that the, the removal of barakah and blessings. Uh, read this booklet, inshallah. And I'm telling you, uh, you will nod your head that I am guilty of this, I am guilty of this, I am guilty of this. One example, that when the, the food is dished out, and if somebody is going to call you, come, the food is ready, it's getting cold. If I am making that food wait for me, then this leads to be barakati deprivation where barakah and blessings are removed subhanallah and some of us are guilty of that and like that there's a whole list of it uh, one more example if a person's shoe that is being worn is left upside down this is a sabab this is a reason for bay barakati a reason to uh, to remove blessings subhanallah so identify what am I doing wrong? That booklet will help us, inshallah ta'ala, to also identify uh, the wrongs that I am doing. And then one by one, rectify those wrongs, inshallah. Make sure that I'm not mixing halal and haram. I'm only working in a job that is halal so that the, um, the wage or the, the salary from there, uh, the income from there is halal. There's a very beautiful wadifa, very famous as well, if it's done correctly. Any wadifa, remember, uh, prerequisites for the wadaif, our, our wadaif especially to work is that a person must have as, must establish the five daily salahs. There's there's no compromise in that. There's no there's no negotiations. Five times a day. I must not hurt people's feelings. I must not oppress anybody. I must not violate people's rights. I must try my best to practice upon the sunnah. I must abstain from evil deeds. And whatever I'm doing must be done for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Isha Salah, go outside under the open sky without any hat on. Face the Qibla whilst in wudu, recite 500 times. Ya Musabbib al Asbab, Ya Musabbib al Asbab, Ya Musabbib al Asbab. 500 times with Dhrudi Park once before and after the person who does this uh, habitually every night after Isha Salah, inshallah Azza wa Jal, that person will gain barakah and blessings in their rizq, in their income. If the person is unemployed, inshallah Azza wa Jal, they will receive employment, good employment by the will of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. For Islamic sisters, they should practice upon this at such a place where ghayr maharim, strangers cannot see them. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please play the next call. I am Rahan Dawood from Durban. I, want to, I would like to ask a question. What can we practice upon for protection against kidnappers? Allahu Akbar. This is a very real danger. I mean, if you're following 
different news articles and you'll know, you'll understand. The syndicates are out there. They have a network for this, global network, where they buy and they sell people, humans, like the like goods. Allah will protect us, our little ones, our offspring against these sinister, these evil oppressors, these kidnappers. Firstly, try to visit a Ruhani Ilaj stall. Ruhani Ilaj is the department of Dawud Islami that, uh, that does the istikhara checkings, that uh, administers the, the different ta'widat, inv uh, invocations, amulets, etc. So try to get in touch with the local Madani markers of Dawud Islami. And uh, if there is a Ruhani Ilaj stall, they ask them for a, a ta'wid for protection against kidnappers. It's a specific ta'wid. I will recommend every person, whether big, whether old, whether small, for your children, for your grandchildren, obtain this ta'weeth. And it must be worn all the time. That is excellent. This is, this is straight from our Amir al-Sunnah Damat Barakatuhum al-Aliyah. Over and above that, whilst making wudu, recite, Ya Qadiru, Ya Qadiru, Ya Qadiru. Washing your hands, Ya Qadiru. Ya Qadiru, your face, your hands, your feet, recite continuously. And through the park as well. Ya Qadiru, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Qadiru, salatu sallam alayhi wa sallam. Ya Qadiru, this is very, very good, very powerful. Something so simple. Let's make the intention to practice. Teach your children this. Teach your grandchildren this as well. Ya Qadiru, throughout the wudu as you are watch, washing the different limbs. Please play the next call. So my name is Fahim Daud from Taiwan. Is there a wazifa for safety of my belongings? Jazakallah. Ameen wa iyyakum. Safety of one's belongings. There's a very simple, very easy wazifa that should be recited ten times. Ya Jalilu. Ya Jalilu. Ya Jalilu. Recite this just ten times. Through the park once before and after and then do dumb. Just Blow towards your belongings, be it your car, your wallet, your phone, maybe some valuable items that you have, your money, etc. So, Ya Jalilu, 10 times through the park, once before and after, and then blow towards that, uh, that uh, possession or that belonging of yours. Insha'Allah, it will remain safe and sound. SubhanAllah. Please play the next call. My name is Imran Mohammed from Durban, South Africa. My question is. What can be recited for personal safety? Jazakallah wa khairah. Ameen wa iyyakum. MashaAllah. Personal protection, personal safety is something that we all want. We all need. We all aspire for that. I must remain protected. I must remain safe. I don't want to be in harm's way or in any danger. SubhanAllah. So for personal protection, one should recite 29 times. Ya muhay minu, ya muhay minu, ya muhay minu. And then do dumb on oneself. Just blow towards oneself. You can do this to your spouse, your parents, your children or grandchildren as well. Recite and do dumb on them. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, that person will receive personal protection by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so those were, mashallah, four calls uh, that um, many of us are experiencing. And you can also apply this in your life. You can share this with somebody that you know, mashallah. And you can see the numbers on your screen. Uh, phone in, send your messages. Uh, if you have some query, some, some wada'if that you're looking for, some issue, some difficulty that is specific to yourself, then send your messages through, inshallah, azawajal. We will address it on this silsila, insha'Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's something as important. We initially mentioned that Iman, we need to look after this. We have to. I can't, I can't have this mentality, this mindset. I'm a Muslim. I have a Muslim name. My parents are Muslim, my family is Muslim, so I'm going to die as a Muslim. Whatever I do in between doesn't matter. This is foolishness. 
This is one of the one of the great tricks of shaitan. If I'm thinking like this, then I must know shaitan has got me trapped in this trick of his. Because ulama ikram, the honorable scholars of Islam have mentioned, the person who does not care about the protection of his iman, it is highly possible that this person may leave the dunya without iman. Allahu Akbar. And once iman is lost, then there is no hope. There is no hope at all. Because to gain entry into Jannah, into paradise, Iman is a death upon Iman or death with Iman. That's the precondition. That is the visa, that is the permit that would allow one to enter into Jannah. Yes, whether a person will enter Jannah straight or the person will be imprisoned in Jahannam to pay for their sins that they committed in this dunya, that is up to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is up to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also the shafa'a and intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that Allah Azza wa Jal has, has granted him. That on the day of judgment, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will, will intercede for, for so many people. And the lesser intercession that the hujjaj, the ulama, the mashayikh, the awliya, the huffaz, uh, they will intercede for family members or other people. When it comes to Hufad, keep this in mind, those Hufad that are practical upon the teachings of the Qur'an, they will be permitted to intercede for a certain number of their family members. So if a person is Hafid al-Qur'an, but they are clean shaven, and they have all these funny design or designer beards and designer haircuts, and no salah, no sunnah in their life, they're going out clubbing and pubbing, maybe drinking alcohol or indulging in drugs or premarital relationships. What can a person say then? That applies to the Hafid al-Qur'an who practices upon the teachings of the Qur'an. Then the benefit is there. That certain number of uh, their family members, they will be able to intercede for them. SubhanAllah. Ulama ikram, the honorable scholars of Islam. SubhanAllah. How many people... Uh, you, you have your minorities here and there that look at the, the ulama, the maulana, the mufti sahab, and they, they don't think twice. I mean, they wouldn't give that the kind of respect or the due respect as one would give to a person of a, a profession, say like a lawyer or a doctor or a judge or something like that. But on the Day of Judgment, all the PhDs, all the degrees, they vanish. They are valueless. It doesn't matter. They just have no value. But those who are righteous ulama, the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, there's a narration that says that uh, as they are heading towards Jannah, Allah Azza wa Jal will, will instruct that they must stop, don't enter. And they will say, Ya Allah, we preached your deen. We taught people about you and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, why are we not given permission to enter Jannah? And then it will be told to them that you need to intercede for so many Muslims who are still burning and suffering in Jahannam. You need to go and take them out, save them. Then you enter Jannah, subhanAllah. And even in Jannah, we will have, we will have this need to ask the ulama questions. How in this world we have some you know, dini question, Islamic question, query, and we ask Mulana Sahib, Mufti Sahib, in Jannah as well, people will have all the, all the pleasures that we can't even think of. Now what should I ask for? What, what should I ask Allah Azza wa Jal for? And they will go to the ulama ikram. Subhanallah. So that's one profession, that's one title, one a degree that's going to be maintained in the hereafter as well to the will of Almighty Allah Azawajal. And don't just go to any person who calls himself a scholar. Go to the ones that are righteous scholars of the Ahlu Sunnah. The scholars that are loyal to Allah Azawajal and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are devotees of Allah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are devotees of Sahaba Ikram, Ahlul Bayt, Awliya Allah. And in today's time, especially the great reviver, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Alihi Rahmatul Rahman, go to them. 
go to your Dawud Islami, go to Darul Ifta Ahl Sunnah, and pose your questions. Keep in touch with righteous ulama. Uh, we can learn a lot, all of us. And always consider yourself as a talibul ilm. Our teachers used to tell us that, you know, no matter high, how high up you get in, uh, on the ladder, no matter what titles you can get, always refer your, uh, to yourself and believe yourself to be a talibul ilm, a student of knowledge. And there's great wisdom in that. Think about it. That if I feel like, you know, I'm high and mighty and I reach a certain level and I, I've got these uh, prefixes or uh, these titles to my name and nobody can teach me now, I, uh, you know, I've learned, um, you know, a lot. Then it's like a cup. If the cup is full to the brim, right to the top, then you can't put any more water in. Whatever water you put in is going to roll over, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pour over, it's going to flow out, because you can't fill anything more. So this mind of ours, if I, it's gone uh, swollen, and I feel like I, I know so much, subhanAllah, you know, so much I know, more than him and him and him. So I won't be able to learn more things, and there's just so much, subhanAllah, Islamic knowledge, it's, it's like, a, like a bottomless ocean, I must keep myself empty. I was, our, our, our teachers used to say that, you know, the tree, the fruit-bearing tree, the one that has the, the ripened fruits, it's hanging down because of the heaviness of the fruits. So it's bending down. It's, that's humbleness, that's humility. And the, the tree, how does it start off as a plant? How does that start off as a seed? That seed is put down into the ground, into the sand. So humbleness, humility, good character, and, and a whole lot of other things like piety, obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, considering yourself as, as, as nothing. Nobody, who am I? No, nobody, nothing. But genuinely feeling that, not just thinking about it or saying it, but not living it, not really having the intention of it. That's a different issue altogether. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Iman, we have to protect our Iman. And don't, don't get carried away uh, by the, these trickeries of shaitan. He's always plotting and planning and he knows which buttons to press. In, in the fit of anger, a person can, can cut off relationships. In the fit of anger, a person's Iman can get destroyed. Allahu Akbar. Another very important thing is to make a wasiyah, make a last testament and will. Because we don't know any time, any moment, I can just drop down and I'm gone. What happens thereafter? Will my family go towards uh, the honorable scholars? And will the, um, the inheritance be distributed uh, according to the Sharia, the Islamic sacred law? Or will one person eat everything, take everything away, and deprive the others. Allahu Akbar. Will, one, will my, my family, my children who were together when I was alive, we were all happy, together, united, yeah, you know, joyous, what a, a wonderful paradigm of a family. And then I'm gone. I never left a will, or I left a will that was inconsistent with the Sharia. And then everybody is, the whole family is split. The joy, the happiness, the unity, it's gone, it's broken, it's happening. It's happening in our Muslim communities. So make a will. Sit with Darul Ifta Ahl Sunnat, which is the department of Dawud Islami, headed by our Mufti Qasim Saab and uh, other honorable ulama and muftis as well. They will advise us. They will inform us that, okay, um, you know, this is uh, how many people are alive. Uh, and uh, this, these are the, the distributions, these are the heirs, etc, etc, subhanAllah. So make that will, inshallah. I will also draw your attention to a very beautiful booklet written by His Eminence, the founder of Dawat e Islam, Hazrat Allama Mawlana Abu Bilal Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Damul Barakatuhul Aliya, called Madani Will. Now this thing has so many beautiful points. Uh, it's, it's like a discourse on its own. 
You can obtain one from Maktabatul Madina or you can download it free from the website, inshallah azza wa jal, dawdislami.net. And in there, you will find, you will see some rulings of burial, rulings of shrouding, and other advices Amir Ahl Sunnah Dhamma Barakatum al gives us. For example, in the grave, the, the marhum, the deceased face is going to face towards the qibla. So that wall that is in front of the, uh, the marhum's face, you make a, a little crevice, a little hole you dig, and you put certain items in there. Put your uh, a, a, a naqsh na'alina pak um, a sketch of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessed shoes. Put a, a little picture of the Gumbad de Khazra, the beautiful emerald green grand dome of Medina Sharif. Put in there a, a, a surah Yasin, Ahad Nama. Try to get it written by uh, any uh, authentic Sunni alim or scholar. So these few things, if you have subhanAllah some sand of Medina Sharif, sprinkle some on the eyes. And like this, you put that in there, those things will assist and help that marhum in the qabr. You and I are not going to know it unless we are there and we are fortunate enough that we had people like Dawud Islami Mubalnireen around and advised the family. I know I've been to uh, some places where there's, there's nothing, there's, there's no adhan afterwards, there's no talqeen, there's no tabarrukat or or items like I've mentioned, like Ahad Nama, placed in it. And you feel sorry for the marhum, you know, because they're helpless now. They can't do anything, they can't say anything. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Islamic brothers, please, if your parents have uh, a late, either, uh, both or either one, make sure you visit their graves. Visit them, they will be so happy. And you know, we will only realize this when we pass away, that my child, my son, is not visiting me, my daughter, my spouse, and, and they're not sending Isali Thawab to me, in the comfort of their home, read Khatam Sharif, Yasin Sharif, through the park, and send the Isali Thawab, but nobody's doing it, especially on Thursday nights, do it every day, recite one, recite one through the park, at least, Ya Allah, accept us in your court. Transfer this Isul Thawab to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Through his wasila and sadqah, transfer this Isul Thawab to so and so. Mention their names. They are obedient to Allah and His Rasul, Azza wa Jalla wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They did the right things, they practiced Sunnah. Inshallah Ta'ala, they will be in comfort in the grave. And if they were drug dealers, drug addicts, alcoholics, clubs, pubs, music, dancing, Premarital relationships, gambling, casinos, and all of this, this muck and this filth, then, well, they would know what to expect if they did not make sincere toba before passing away. So, Madani will, the booklet, get it, read it, and include some of those points in your wasiyah, in your last will and testament as well. I mentioned about giving adhan at the graveside. Subhanallah. I'm sure by now you know the narration, when Adhan is called out, Shaitan is running away. He's afraid, he, he has fear now. When he, has, when he has Adhan, he's running at a very far distance. So as some scholars have mentioned, when a person is laid to rest in the Qabr, Shaitan appears there. And when uh, the angels are asking those three questions, Marabbuka, who is your Lord? And Shaitan points to himself. So why don't we help the deceased and call out the adhan and chase this la'een, chase this cursed and humiliated one so that he does not try to interfere with the marhum who's down there, who's helpless, who can't do anything. Subhanallah. So this is the reason why it is recommended that after the burial of the person, adhan be called out. And adhan is not only called out for salah. That adhan is for calling the people, uh, the, the men folk towards the masjid for salah. You know, when the child is born, you're calling out adhan in the right ear, in qama in the left ear, inshallah, as This will be very beneficial for that newborn. Uh, adhan is also called out when there's a pandemic, an epidemic. Uh, if a person um, has uh, fits, like epilepsy, 
and if there's drought, these kind of situations, adhan is also called out. So it benefits the, the deceased. This is the, the main point. It helps the, uh, the, the, the individual in the grave who, is, who can't do anything. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And about visiting your parents, especially on a Jumu'ah. On a Jumu'ah day, and if you recite Surah Yasin at the gravesite, remember when you are going to visit, they, rec they, they recognize you. They know that this is my, my, my son. This is my grandson. This is my, my husband. This is my brother, my grandfather, whoever it is. And they, and they become so happy that you came to visit me. And then you present the Isol Thawab, like Surah Yasin. So Surah Yasin, if you recite at the graveside of your parent on a Jumu'ah day, then according to the Huruf, the letters of the Surah, the sins of that person will be forgiven. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And um, whoever, there's a, a summary of a hadith, the person who forgot to make dua for his parents, then his rizq, his sustenance, his income is cut short. Allahu Akbar. So remember your parents. Whether they are alive, whether they have passed away, either one or both, remember them. Make dua for them. Make dua for them. Maghfirah as well. And this will benefit us. By doing this, inshallah, inshallah, maybe our offspring, our, our kids, they will remember us when we are in the qabr all alone. I hope you took some benefit of today's um, uh, episode, inshallah, Zawajal. Try to pass on this message onto others with good intentions. And don't forget Madani Mudakara every Saturday night with Amir al Sunnah, Tamil Barakatum al Aliyah live. You can catch us next time only on Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah heal you from whatever pain. You are suffering from me, Allah heal you from whatever pain you are suffering from.